We're going to create a CSV file, which Anki will be able to pull our card information from. In this demonstration, I'm going to be using Excel, but you can use LibreOffice or any other spreadsheet program that allows you to save in the .csv format. Starting with Anki open, I'm going to click on Browse. And up at the top here, you can see some of the decks that I already have created. I want to duplicate the style of these HSK 1, 2, and 3 cards. If you have decks already created that you like the style, then select that one. As you can see, the fields on the right-hand side are Hansa, Pinyin, English, and Audio. So I want to go ahead and duplicate those fields within Excel. So that was Hansa. English and audio. Then next in the final column you want to type tag. So as you can see I have Excel open on the left and Word open on the right. Now that we have our Excel document set up we could either type in all of our entries directly into Excel or if we have our entries already typed in a Word document, we could copy and paste them. Since I'm much more comfortable working in Word rather than Excel, I went ahead and typed them into Word. So what I'm going to do is copy the English first. And what you're going to do is just click into that first cell right beneath English and paste it. Then I'm going to go over here and take the simplified. And I'm going to continue to do that with the rest of the entries. So the purpose of the tag column is to help you find your cards later in Anki. What I like to do with the tag column is either call it the name of the chapter of the textbook that I'm making cards for or sometimes the page number. In this particular instance, I want the page number, so I'm going to go ahead and put three, which means something to me. But go ahead and put whatever you need so that you can find your cards later in the tag section. And through the magic of editing, I'm going to go ahead and paste three in all of the tag cells. So as you can see, I closed Word and I opened a finder window. I'm using a Mac. If you're on a Windows computer, go ahead and navigate to where you have your audio files for your flashcards saved. As you can see here, my audio files are similarly named and they're in sequential order. This is important because we're going to use a formula to pull them into Excel. If you're unfamiliar with how to rename multiple files to a unique name and a sequential number, I'm going to put a link in the description below to a video that I've made to show you how to do that. So take note of how you have things named because you're going to base your formula on how your files are named. I want to share a tip with you that I haven't yet mentioned in the series. When you are creating your content for your flashcards, i.e. the typed information and the audio files, it's best to create those in the order that you want them to appear as flashcards. So in this instance, I have 607 BCE as the first card and over here in my audio, the first audio file that I have relates to 607 BCE. This is going to help you because if you don't do this, it's going to make creating this a little more difficult. So since that's already done, create a new column and we're going to put one and two. Then select both one and two because we're telling Excel that we want to repeat this pattern in the cells following. And there's this little bitty box in the bottom right hand corner. Drag it down to the end of your information. Oops, I went a little too far. So we'll just go ahead and delete those two and then it'll automatically fill the numbers in for you. These numbers relate to the file names. So in this instance, page number three, sound file number one, 
that is what this one is. It's referring to sound file number one. So if you did not have these in order, you would have to fill this column out with the related sound file. So for example, if I had sound file number nine, which is down here first, then this one would change to a nine. So that's why it's important to name them sequentially in the order that you want in the beginning. So you don't have to really think about order. You can just go at it. So now we're going to create the function that's going to pull our sound files into the Excel document. So click on the first cell underneath audio, and then we're going to start the function with equal sign, open quotes, open bracket, the word sound, colon, the beginning of your MP3 file names, which in my case is page three dash. Then we're going to close quotes, ampersand, type the word text, open parentheses. Then we're going to put in the cell letter and number of our column that we created that's numbered, which in my case, it's F two. If you click on it, it should automatically plug it into your function field for you. Then hit comma, open quotes again. I'm going to type five zeros. And the reason why I am putting five zeros here is that it directly correlates to my MP3 files. As you can see, I have five digit numbers in my file name. However many digits you have in your file names, for example, if you just have 01, that is a two digit number, so you would type in two zeros. But in my case, I have five. After I type the five zeros, I'm gonna close the quotation marks, close the parentheses, ampersand, close quotation marks, dot MP3, close the bracket, and close the quotes. So now we're going to copy our function into the remaining cells in our audio column. We can do this by clicking on that little box again in the lower right hand corner of the cell. And there we go. So the next thing we want to do is important because we want to delete this F column before we import into Anki. So to do that, we want to highlight the entire audio column, right click, copy, right click again, paste special values. So what this is doing is we essentially copied what we had there, pasted it. Now we're able to delete the F column as it's no longer needed and we don't want it when we import into Anki. Had we not pasted the values first, if we deleted this column, it would ruin our function by removing those file numbers. So while you're in the home tab, just simply click on delete, delete sheet columns, and F is removed. Now we also want to delete the headings because we do not need to import those. Click anywhere in the heading row, click delete on the home tab, delete sheet rows. The next thing we want to do is move our audio files into the location where Anki can read them, which is the collection.media folder. If you're not sure where your collection.media folder is, I'm going to put a link to a video in the description below that will teach you how to find it. I have mine located in my favorites. As you can see in my finder window at the bottom, there is my collection.media folder. I also want to mention that I have a bad habit of moving files rather than copying them. So if you're like me and you want your audio files to still be available to you without you having to go into the collection.media folder, make a copy of them first just in case you move them. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the files and drag them into my collection.media folder. And as you can see, I moved them. Good thing I made a copy first. So you may have noticed before that I did have some commas in my text. So I went ahead and deleted those and now we're going to save our file as a CSV file. Hit file, save as, and I'm just going to call an Anki deck and I'm going to save it to my desktop, but you would want to pick a file name that means something to you and save it wherever you're going to save your Anki decks. Under file format, select CSV UTF-8. That UTF-8 allows Excel and other programs to read Chinese and Japanese characters and the like. Hit save. And I already had that, so that's why I had to hit replace. 
you're going to see this little message about possible data loss. You can just ignore that. And there is our Anki deck CSV file waiting to be uploaded into Anki. So now we're back in Anki and we're ready to upload the CVS file that we just created. Before we can do that, however, we need to know the note type that our cards are based on. How do I do that? Well, in Anki, click on Tools, Manage Note Types, and here are all the different types of notes that you have. My problem is I have so many cards, I cannot remember all of my note types. That is why in the beginning of this demonstration, I told you to browse your decks and select a card deck that you wanted to mimic. If I click on any random one, HSK, and I hit fields, here are all the fields for that note type. I can see that that does not apply to the field types I created for this demonstration. If I click on Chinese, click fields, and there is the note type that I want. So I need to keep that information in the back of my head that the note type is Chinese. So now let's pretend we want to create a brand new deck. In Anki, click Create Deck at the bottom and give your deck a name. Click OK. Then we're going to click File Import and navigate to the location where you saved your CVS file. In my case, it's on the desktop. Select it, click open. The first selection here is the type. That is the note type that we discovered a moment ago. In my case, it is Chinese. It may not always default to the type that you need, so make sure that that is correct. The next field is deck. We just created a sample deck for demo, so we're going to choose that. You can take a look at your file mapping to make sure that everything looks good and click import. Hit close and you're done creating your new deck and it's ready to use. So now we're going to add our cards to a deck that we have already created in the past. The process is very similar. However, we skip creating the deck Go directly to File Import, navigate to our CVS file, click Open. Make sure again that our type is correct. In my case, it is Chinese, so that's right. Then click on the deck that you want to add to. In this demonstration, we'll use Demo Deck. Click Choose. Once again, make sure that your field mapping looks okay. This will be a good indication that you have selected the correct type. If this does not look like what you created in your CVS file, then your type is wrong. Click import, click close, and you have now added cards to an already existing deck. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you did, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And also give me some ideas of what type of Chinese learning tutorials you'd like to see next. Have a great day.